Hi, everybody. My name is Joel Hodson, and Comedy Central has been very brave and generous to allow me to show my latest offering, the TV Wheel. In its entirety, 29 minutes and 30 seconds without any commercial interruption. As you can see, this is the 29 minutes and 30 with 30 seconds introduction. And this is where we are right now. As you can see, the gaps for the commercials are slightly thicker than usual, but we think it's worth it. Anyway, I've invited some friends of mine along, the Puppet Puppet Puppets, to kind of serve as commercial traffic cops. Commercial traffic cops. Now, what does that mean exactly? Well, it doesn't mean anything other than that the TV wheel is done in real time with one camera, and so all the, you know, sound effects, music, puppets, that, that doesn't offend you, does it? Keep talking, flesh boy. Puppets and performances were all done without any cuts or edits of any kind. In this machine I created called the TV wheel, and what we've got here is some footage of an early version called the Xbox. There you go. Yeah, so? Well, uh, you know, it's a great big turntable that moves over sets and actors in front of the camera. Yeah, it looks like a great big fire trap is what it looks like. To well, uh, you know, there, it moves, there's no cuts, and so we felt that by cutting and inserting a commercial would kind of upset the integrity. So I agreed to go ahead and police these. He's at it again. Uh, what seems to be the problem, puppet sirs? Oh, nothing. Guess we're just a little bit edgy. There's just something in the air tonight. Yep. A lot of puppets out of work these days. So? Add it up, happy boy. Warm weather. Unemployed puppets. Perfect climate for a... Puppet, puppet uprising. uprising. Well, why would there be unrest among the puppets? Well, who knows? Maybe they're just bent out of shape about the advent of computer graphics. When everyone knows full well, there could be nothing better for us puppets. Right. Uh, Jim, how about that cyberspace blackboard? Oh! Puppet organizers, get them. Um, move along, people. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Well, anyway, uh, we don't actually have uh, all the time in the world to talk about the genesis of the TV wheel, Xbox. Uh, the actual research, development, and execution was three years in the making. Uh, we haven't got that much time. Uh, only got a few minutes, so uh, I'm going to try to hit the high spots. Anyway, uh, it was all based on the idea of trying to make the TV more like a window. The TV is like a window that can change its perspective at any time. It can also change characters whenever it wants. And on top of that, it can change its situations instantly. So I thought, why not make the TV more like a real window? Hey, 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 let's move along, people. There's nothing to see here. Back to your puppet homes. Gonna let Ludwig von Drake finish this little spiel of his. Yeah, I use the puppet steps. Anyway, to describe how the TV is like a window, we have to decide or define the space that separate or that the window separates. Okay, so uh, here's a diagram of uh, me on camera here, and here's a diagram of you at home watching on your TVs. Uh, note the bowl of chips. Anyway, uh, this is the space that you occupy while you're watching, like that. And over here is the space that I occupy while I'm being photographed. And this is the window that separates us. And you know, it's so reasonable. Tell her to hurry up. Mom, come on. Barry, Larry, take it easy. Well, best of luck with your new television concept circle show. It sounds like such fun. Mom, now he's doing something. I expect this to be a real boon to the working woman as well. Well, gotta go. Bye-bye. See you later. Thank you. Anyway, uh, in the last segment, we were talking about how we could make television... So oh, could you move in that uh, cyberspace chalkboard again? In the last segment, we were kind of talking about how you could make TV kind of like a window if you were able to uh, bring together and measure the spaces that it separates, okay? Here's you guys in your space watching TV with your bowl of chips, your beverage. Somebody's got the remote. And uh, here's me over here being photographed on camera. But how do you, we know what this is like. We've all got one. But how do you define that on camera space? We've got some footage here. Let's bring in that. Here's some footage of uh, us at the uh, 
Boyle Heights Xbox test site. Uh, it's myself, our friend Craig Gooder, and my brother Jim trying to define the on-camera space. Now that is an early version of what became known as the optic box. It's an actual framework that frames in the on-camera space. And here we are trying to uh, work with lenses and see if it could work. That's what it all looks like. And here's what Jim and Craig look like. Come on in here. My brother Jim. Here's Craig Gooder right there. Thanks a lot. Anyway, through our uh, research and development, we found out that the optical box principle does work in defining cyberspace. It works so well, in fact, I'm wearing one. No, I'm just kidding. I'm standing in one. And what we're going to do is turn off this camera and move it over there so you can see what it looks like from the side. Uh, when we cut, you might feel a little sting, but beyond that, I think you'll be fine. Boom. We're at a different angle. Uh, actually, my uh, optic box isn't floating in space. It's uh, sitting on the set of my new upcoming low-budget art house space film. Statical planets filmed in static matic uh, We don't have time to talk about it now. You should just check out my website and find out all about the tour coming up in the fall. Come on, you guys. Let's get out of there. Quit clowning around. Hey, check it out. It's Alex Carr, my own line producer from Mystery Science Theater 3000. She's great. Anyway, so now you get the picture. The optic box defines all the on-camera space that the camera sees. Now, uh, I think there you have it. Now I'm going to cut back to the other space. Here we go. See how when you cut like that, it loses some of its flavor? Hey, enjoying the lecture so far? Well, this is such crap. I mean, everyone knows that cyberspace has to do with virtual reality. And virtual reality has to do with powerful computers, not building a wooden box around what a camera sees. Jeez. Hey, what's your name? Danny. Danny, I'd set you straight on this subject, but I don't know if you can really handle it. <laughs> handle what? Well, what I'm about to tell you, I don't know if you really want to hear it. It might be uh, really upsetting to you. Oh, come on. Tell me. I, I want to know. Danny, buddy, television is virtual reality. Word. Gets pretty tough sometimes. Anyway, let's roll in that uh, Xbox uh, definition deep space chalkboard. Okay, so let's say you're doing a show that takes place in one spot. Here's our optic box space. How do you move all the sets and actors in without cutting? I don't know. Maybe put it on a wheel. Hey, let's look at some of that footage of the early Xbox R&D. See what it looks like here. Okay, there it is all set up, ready to turn, and that's how it works. You know, that's, that's all well and good, Joel, but uh, did it ever occur to you to maybe put the actors and the sets on the floor and just move the camera? Well, you know what? You're not the first one to say that. Anyway, let's see the new board in here, Jim, anyway. Sick and tired of it. What are you going to do? Don't 